Monday, June 10th, 2019, Common Council meeting is now in session. Would you please stand? Uh, our invocation is by Reverend Arnie Clare of New Creation Fellowship. Is the Reverend here? That is not him. I'm going to go to my bullpen, Mr. Oliver Davis. Would you right. please give us our invocation? Dear Lord, we thank you so much for being here tonight. So we ask for your wisdom, we ask for your guidance as we make decisions for the city of South Bend. We ask you to bless our mayor, bless each member of the city council, bless all those who are in attendance tonight. And may we all work together to make this a stronger city. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Join, in, join in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Thank you. You may be seated. If you would, please turn your cell phones to silent. Ms. Hoffman, roll call. <clears throat> Councilmember Preston. Excuse. Councilmember McBride. Present. Councilmember Broden. Uh, here. Councilmember Chester. Here. Councilmember Davis. Present. Councilmember Bordy. Here. Councilmember Furlick. Here. Vice President White. Present. President Scott. Present. Eight present. Thank you. To um, uh, report on subcommittee minutes, please. To the Common Council of the City of South Bend, the subcommittee has inspected the minutes of the May 28, 2019 meeting of the council and found them to be correct. Therefore, we recommend the same be approved. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Ms. Kaufman, would you please read Special Business uh, Bill Resolution 1939, please? 1939, a resolution of the Common Council of South Bend, Indiana, honoring the life of a great man, Robert L. Miller, Sr. Thank you. Is there a presenter? There is. Jake Teshka, 2419 Cheshire Drive, here in South Bend. And uh, before we get underway, I'd just like to uh, thank uh, members from Miller's Vets for being here tonight uh, to honor uh, Judge Miller's life and also uh, Judge Miller's son, uh, Bob Jr., and oh, cool. uh, granddaughter Amanda for, like for being here as well. Mercy. Uh, Judge Miller was always somebody that uh, I looked up to, and, and his uh, impact on the community was, uh, I think, too too great to, uh, to even capture in one resolution as I think our attorney Bob can attest uh, his service to our country in, in uh, World War II in the Navy, his service to our community, uh, the list of things that uh, his hands were in here locally goes on and on and on. And uh, I, I consider myself blessed to have known him uh, uh, in his later years and, and for the wisdom that uh, I gained from uh, speaking with him uh, usually on, on a monthly occasion. And, uh, and that's why I wanted to bring this resolution to, to you tonight. So without further ado, I will read this. Thank you. Resolution of the Common Council of South Bend, Indiana, honoring the life of the great man, Robert L. Miller, Sr. Whereas Robert Lowell Miller, Sr., born December 5, 1920, in Wilkinson, Indiana, the son of James and Emma Miller, is, by definition, a member of what we now recognize as the greatest generation. And whereas Judge Miller is a member of the greatest, as a member of the greatest generation, not only by reason of the date of his birth, but also by the reason of enlisting in the United States Navy during World War II and serving five major campaign battles in the South Pacific, during which time Judge Miller received more than a dozen medals, including a Purple Heart. And whereas Judge Miller's military service continued when he was recalled to active duty during the Korean War. And whereas Judge Miller returned to South Bend and raised his family, which grew to five children, 12 grandchildren, seven great-grandchildren, and includes, or, and including Judge Miller being a 
great guardian of one. And whereas Judge Miller's contribution to our community took so many forms that any attempt to even mention all of them would undoubtedly fail uh, due to sheer numbers. And whereas this resolution is being presented shortly after Memorial Day 2019 and the 75th anniversary of the invasion of Normandy, a.k.a. D-Day. Mm. So it is fitting to focus on one of Judge Miller's primary loves, military veterans. Mm. And Judge Miller's devotion to military veterans, like his other contributions to our community, took many forms. But two projects in particular are evidence of Judge Miller's greatness, Miller's Vets, and the Half Staff for Veterans program. And whereas Miller's Vets is a drill team of uniformed veterans from the South Bend Center for the Homeless who provide advanced skills and close quarter drill participation and color guard performance, including the last salute, a full military funeral with all military honors for veterans who have no family, church, or veteran organization to assist with funeral plans. And whereas Half Staff for Veterans is a program resulting from a proclamation from Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb which enabled Judge Miller's vision to fly the American flag at half-staff for all deceased veterans in St. Joseph County on Patriot Day, mm. Veterans Day, and Memorial Day of each year. And whereas Judge Miller is now one of the deceased veterans for which the flag flies at half-staff on those days. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the South Bend Common Council as follows. Section 1. Judge Miller's words that our military vets deserve the very best shall continue to guide us in action toward all who have served in the military. Section 2, Judge Miller is unquestionably one of the greatest of the greatest generation and will be missed by all. Section 3, Godspeed. Godspeed. Section 4, this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage by the South Bend Common Council and approval by the mayor. Awesome. Thank you. I don't know how to follow that. That's right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything this council would like to add? What do you want to have from the speak? Uh, Jake, anybody else? Uh, well, I, I'd speak? like to invite if any, any of uh, those here in attendance from, from Miller's Vets or if anybody from the family would like to, to say a few words, uh, you're more than welcome at this time to do so. Okay. Come on. Come on up. My name's Ed Burr. I'm the, uh, sir, sir, come on up. Yeah, if you could approach the uh, the podium and the microphone, that way we catch every word for the, for the public record. All right, name and address, sir. My name's Ed Burris. I'm the uh, commanding officer of the Miller's Vets Color Guard, and I don't know what else I can add from what uh, Jake. Jake has said, <laughs> but uh, just a few weeks ago. We uh, did the half-staff salute on Memorial Day, which was one of uh, Judge Miller's greatest achievements. He always pushed for that. And here is the fruit of his labors right here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight members of the color guard present. Three aren't here tonight because one's having surgery tomorrow, <laughs> one's working, and one's not feeling well. But... Uh, from what started out as doing honors for deceased veterans over the past eight, nine years has gone to average of 100 gigs a year. Parades, color guard presentations, uh, just a various amount of different things we do. We've got a busy summer coming up, and uh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to do. Uh, when Judge Miller asked me to do the uh, Miller's Vets, I expected it to be a one or two day deal, and it ended up six years. And I can honestly say, even though I did complain sometimes, uh, I loved every minute of it. It's great. He was a great man to be with, a great man to work with, and uh, very, very much, uh, he's going to be missed very, very much by everybody that knew him, knows him. Uh, and like I said, the last ceremony we did, we did in honor of Judge Miller, which was on Memorial Day. Uh, Can we introduce the guys here? Please do. Okay. Please do. Why don't I start? Come, come up. Please stand. Randy Lester, stand up, Randy. Kelly Rodewald, Steve Pietrock of Peter Zach, Mark Harbaugh, 
Don Weiss, what have we got there? Jerry Smead, Blaine Hagedorn, and Mark Sawyer. Robert Cornish is our photographer. We took him on. He's not a veteran, but he works just as hard, or maybe harder than some of these guys, but a uh, good man. The gentlemen that are missing are Thomas Farr. Uh, I feel like I'm... Ken Donnelly. Ken Donnelly and uh, Jody Roby. And Nick Fian I'm sorry, another fellow. Poor guy's missing. He's working also. So, uh, great bunch of guys. Big guys to work with. And I'd like to introduce Kent Lauderman. He, uh, Thanks, Ed. All right. You know, one thing that I didn't hear in the resolution is that uh, Robert Miller Sr. was also instrumental in starting the Robert Miller Veterans mm -hmm. Center for Homeless Veterans. Mm -hmm. And I had the opportunity to be the director for six years. I'm now retired. It still goes on. It's a 24-bed facility. And for the first five years, uh, all 24 beds were filled, and we actually had a waiting list. Uh, the last time I checked, uh, the admission was 340 admissions to the Robert Miller Veterans <laughs> Center. And uh, that's running about 74, 76 percent. That's temporary housing. Couldn't stay there more than 24 months at the most. Uh, but it's temporary housing, and we were successful in getting at least 76 percent into permanent housing when they left there, as well as part-time work, full-time work, and so forth. And a couple of these individuals here had the opportunity to stay there. So that's an additional part of the resolution. Robert was uh, creative, more creative than Ed and I could handle. That's all I can say. Uh, his mind was great. He came up with more activities and events that we could possibly handle. Uh, but it was great. I mean, it, but to see his uh, sharp mind was just something to behold because he kept coming up with idea after idea after idea. So we thank him for that. Thank you. Sir, for, if you would, state your name and address for the record. Uh, Kent Lodman. 1845 Champlain Drive, Niles, Michigan. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public wishing to speak in favor? Here comes. Well, it looks like the dead. Uh, I'm Bob Miller, Jr., 204 South Main Street, Robert A. Grant Federal Building. And I just want to add one thing, which is how much he loved this city. Uh, he lived here for 80 years. Uh, once he got here, he never moved. He started, uh, he, he came up from Indianapolis to play football at Notre Dame. And from the first person he met, who happened to be the Methodist preacher, because his mother was a little concerned about his attending this university at Notre Dame, <laughs> different age. Uh, but uh, from, the, from the first person he met until the last person he saw, he loved South Bend. And, he has other things that need to be mentioned, but that should as well. Oh, thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Oh. My name is Aladine DeRose. Um, I'm an attorney in South Bend, and I reside at 1421 East Washington Street. I'm also a friend of the Miller family. And I've attended three uh, memorial services for Judge Miller. And in that, in all of these services, I've learned something that I didn't know about him, each more astounding than the other. But what you all don't know probably is that he was an inventor, that he worked hard, that for the last 10 years of his life, between ages 88 and 98, he's probably accomplished more in, a, in his legal career uh, than any of us mm. who practice 40 years already. Mm. Uh, he, is, he was a remarkable man and a family man devoted to his children, to the community, to the practice of law. He was a judge. He was a Renaissance man and an inventor. He invented at least two products for, uh, mm. for those. When he saw a need, he met the need personally, if, mm. no, if no one else did. He's just remarkable. And it was my privilege and pleasure to know him. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Oh. Anyone else? Anyone dare to speak against this resolution? It is a democracy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm going to turn back to Council for comments. We'll start with uh, Ms. McBride. Thank you, Councilman Tesco, for bringing the resolution and to the family. Uh, thank you for being here. What an honor for us to uh, 
have the resolution be passed today. So congratulations to the family and to the vets. Thanks for coming and sharing this day uh, with us. Um, his legacy will continue to live on in uh, South Bend. I remember mm -hmm. going and taking a tour of the homeless uh, clinic for the vets and what a great partnership that and, and, and a uh, building that he uh, started. And I would love to see and know that everything that he had left behind will continue to move forward through his family and through the community. So I honor him today and i um, just glad that you brought us before us today. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. Broden? Thank you. Uh, Councilman Borteska, uh, excellent resolution. I'm happy to support it. Um, and uh, just you've uh, tucked in so many uh, nice uh, thoughts and sentiments and uh, truly is an honor um, to his service and also um, your testimony to how he impacted your life directly. And uh, anytime um, Aladdin DeRose comes up and mm -hmm. uh, gives that type of resounding uh, support, um, we know as an entire community um, uh, that, that we can all get behind this. I want to thank uh, the service members that are here today and those who also support the very important work of um, uh, the Miller's vets that uh, thank you for your past service, for your current service, and uh, your future service. We appreciate it on behalf of the city. Dr. Davis? It's truly an honor to be voting for this resolution. I would like to thank all the Miller vets, the family. I'm glad that you're here. When I hear of somebody who got the purple star, you know, bronze star, all those kind of things, it's just been amazing to the bravery. And the word I look at is the word influence. His influence lives forever and will live forever. Power can fade. People can vote you out. People can move forward. Influence never fades. Influence, in fact, over time, it even gets stronger. And it gets stronger as we look at his life, as we look from his legacy and then everything he's done for all his life and what will be continued through his son and what has been continued through the grandchildren. And each one of you and all of us are a part of him. And so it's been a blessing and an honor to see his work, to be a part of that, and to teach us to leave our cities better than where we first came. And I think that's what he's done in all of our lives. So it's truly an honor. I'm glad you have brought this resolution to us, and I look forward to supporting it. Uh, Jake and uh, veterans and family members, it's a privilege to just consider a resolution like this. Uh, <clears throat> if you didn't know him, um, you know now just by what you've heard tonight that he truly was a remarkable uh, man, and, and uh, I'm honored to just to be a part of a resolution. Thank you. You know, I'm that just honored to be a part of this resolution. Really incredible man. Thank you. I would like to thank Councilmember Jake for bringing this resolution before the council. Indeed, it's an honor to support such a resolution in behalf and on behalf of an outstanding person. Not only was he a judge, but he was so committed to the city of South Bend and to the vets that you have given your time and your commitment to this country. I personally thank you for your work. Uh, and also, it's just an honor to really call you Judge Miller's vets. You know, that is a legacy that will continue to live on and on. And to the family members, uh, we thank you for sharing your dad with us. Uh, he was a great man, and his life and his legacy will continue way beyond the, the times that we will have on this earth. So, again, thank you so much. Finally, thank you, um, Jake, for Councilman Teshka for bringing this, and uh, I am truly honored as well. And uh, I want to thank the family for being here and in and, uh, and his service. And uh, you guys in the front row, that legacy lives on. And as you pass that down, um, I'll remember Judge Miller from you guys. So thank you for all you do, too. So do you think I can come forth on it? So, um, Mr. Teshka, anything else? No, I think I, uh, I kind of went out of order there and, and <laughs> did my spiel in the beginning. But uh, as you heard, I think you know, again, the, 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 this list could not be comprehensive just because of the life that Judge Miller lived. And, uh, and as Aladine pointed out, even in, in, 
even in the last decade of his life, he continued pushing forward and uh, and accomplishing new things and, and achieving uh, more and doing more. And uh, and I would I would say that the you know his legacy lives on not only in his vets but in his family and in, in the legacy or the legacy of service that uh, that they're carrying out as well. And so thank you for your your support and uh, look forward to passing this uh, tonight. Motion to adopt the acclamation. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? We'd like to invite them to come forth. I'd like to invest in uh, the family. Come on up. And Aladdin. <laughs> come on up. You're going to have the whole crowd. Come on up. That's nice. It's Julie and I. Come on. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. I know. I know. Yes, indeed. I like it. Oh, well, thank you. You trained me well. Okay. I got thank you. Very much. All right. See you later. Thank you. 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 Come on up, on the road. Yep, you're good. <laughs> That's cool. Every council meeting, we get a picture with Jake. <laughs> That's cool. Hmm. I can't throw the ball in this one. Wow. Too big. All right. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, I made some recording. Yeah, I said I don't know. I didn't listen to the same cook. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah. Thank you all. I don't know. I do wonder. Yeah. Go back to our regular scheduled program. Good news. Mm-hmm. At this time, there are no reports from city offices. Uh, Jamie Morgan's in the audience, representing the mayor's office. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, at this time, there is no uh, committee of the whole, and there are no bills for third reading. We'll move straight to resolutions. Ms. Kaufman, would you please read 1940? 1940, resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, approving the issuance of scrap metal junk dealer recycling operation licenses for calendar year 2019, pursuant to section 451 of the South Bend Municipal Code. Thank you. Is there a committee report? Yes, uh, Health and Public Safety met today and gave us a favorable recommendation. Is there a presenter? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. Uh, my name is Graham Sparks. I'm with the city clerk's office, offices on the fourth floor of the county city building. Sir, yes. is today your birthday? No. Yes, yes. 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 today. Happy birthday. Close, thank you. <laughs> Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the property in question today uh, is located at 3109 South Gertrude. Um, pursuant to the South Bend Municipal Code, it is uh, under the jurisdiction of the Ordinance Violations Bureau uh, to uh, annually process the uh, scrap metal and junk dealers' licenses. Uh, we had a resolution um, uh, approving the majority of these uh, a few meetings ago. Uh, we had one uh, remaining one that took some time. Uh, this is a new owner of a property. Property that has had a long-standing license formally under the name of Steve and Jean's Auto. Uh, the property is in the 6th Common Council District, just south of Rome Village Park. The property does not have any outstanding issues or former violations. 
the delay is uh, the, the delay in approving this license was a convocation with the transfer of ownership from Steve and Jeans to now what's called first choice towing. Uh, the property has passed fire, police, and code inspections. Fire has inspected the building and it should not be used as office space as it is currently configured. Uh, the applicant intends on raising the structure. If you have any questions, I defer to my colleagues and or the committee meeting minutes that I will be completing later. <laughs> I yield my time. <laughs> Council, are there any questions for Mr. Graham? Okay. Come on, one. It's his birthday. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, at this time, we'll open up the public. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor of 1940, please come to the podium. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak against 1940, please come to the podium. Back to council. I make a motion that 1940, uh, the resolution be adopted. Second. Ms. Kaufman. Councilmember McBride. Aye. Councilmember Broden. Aye. Councilmember Teshbeck. Aye. Councilmember Davis. Aye. Councilmember Gordy. Aye. Councilmember Furlick. Aye. Vice President White. Aye. President Scott. Aye. Eight ayes. Thank you. Would you please read 1941, Ms. Kaufman? 1941, a resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, amending resolution number 471082 to include a document extending and amending the 2017 Human Rights Interlocal Agreement with the County of St. Joseph. Thank you. Is there a committee report? There is. Um, good afternoon. Hang on, Ms. Alabama. The so House and Public report. Safety Committee met <laughs> and uh, gave this a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank now, you. Mr. Rose, since it is not your birthday, you can go ahead and start. Uh, thank you, Council President Scott, members of the Council. I'm Aladine DeRose uh, with offices on the 12th floor of this building. I'm here to uh, request that the Council approve this resolution which concerns the interlocal agreement between the South Bend Human Rights Commission and the County of St. Joseph to enforce the County's human rights uh, law. That law was passed in 2017 and it's uh, substantially equivalent to that of the City. At the time that the, council, the County Council passed its ordinance, it did not have an enforcement body. And so uh, about nine months later, in, in September, the county and the city entered an agreement by which the, county, the city enforces the county's human rights ordinance. That was later then uh, continued through 2018 under, or, under resolution 46, 4710 18, but omitted from that resolution was a document that allows the continuance of the interlocal agreement um, indefinitely from year to year based upon council. Uh, county Council's uh, appropriation of funds for the city's uh, services provided in this or in the uh, interlocal agreement. So at this time, at the time that uh, we were before the council in 2018 in April, the uh, county hadn't begun its 2019 budget process. It did do that. It appropriated the funds, and under the exhibit that's being attached, Exhibit A1, the city uh, can continue its services to the county and on an indefinite basis as long as there's an agreement regarding funding. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. DeRose? Question for you. Um, Davis. And sorry I wasn't brought up this afternoon part of it. In terms of the county fees for this, will there be um, the need, well, in the, in the need in the future to raise the fees or whatever, how will that go about being handled? That's an annual process, and, that's, and that was the purpose of um, Exhibit A-1, is for the county and the city to sit down and discuss the numbers, the, um, okay. the actual work that's been done. If there's a need to increase it, we'll discuss that. At this time, we don't see the need for that. Okay. But at the time when that's, in, that's the it's, part, it's part of and the then they process. will then, um, we will make that recommendation to them. We have our uh, diversity and inclusion officer, Ms. Christina Brooks, has notified the council that we would like the council to continue its current appropriation. Got you. I'm on. Okay. I'm on. Thank you. Any other questions? I'm good. Thank you. Um, we'll open up to the public. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor of 1941, please come to the podium. State your name and address. Samuel Brown, 222 East Street, City of South Bend. I'm a human rights officer for the city of South Bend, and like I said earlier today, 
is that I uh, appreciate your blessing on this passing this. I think in time they'll see that this is a good agreement. We have been willing to work in the county for a long time. Finally, we just get the pieces put together. And I hope this can be a partnership that we can last for a long time. We just got to put the work in and prove that we're worthy of it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak against, please come to the podium. <coughs> Seeing none, uh, turn it back to council. Motion for adoption. Second. Second. Ms. Coffin. Councilmember Broden. Aye. Councilmember Teshka. Aye. Councilmember Davis. Aye. Councilmember Bordy. Aye. Councilmember Furlick. Aye. Vice President White. Aye. Councilmember McBride. Aye. President Scott. Aye. Thank you. Ms. Kaufman, 1942, please. 1942. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, adopting the St. Joseph County Multi-Hazard Mitigation Plan. Thank you. Uh, is there a committee report? Yes. Community investment met, and we send this forward favorably. And I'd like to make a motion to accept the substitute, please. No, Hold on a minute. No, 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 no. We're still on health and public health. Sorry. Sorry. He's a good guy. He's a favorable recommendation. <laughs> Thank you. So, Mr. Furlick, we're on 1942. <laughs> so, is there a presenter for 1942? Good evening, Council. Derek Corbat, office on 13th floor of this building. Uh, in front of you today is a resolution that we're asking the council to approve adopting the multi-hazard mitigation plan for St. Joe County. Um, this plan is a guide for the assessment of hazards, vulnerabilities, and risks. Um, and what it does is it aids, uh, it's a, it's a countywide plan that aids local jurisdictions uh, in reviewing these hazards and having mitigation plans um, to help with them. So. It's, uh, it's got a number of different areas here that uh, are basically aimed at uh, preventing, um, protecting against, responding to, and recovering from disasters in its, in its most simple form. Um, and there are a number of strategies here uh, that um, allow for potential mitigation of impacts to these natural hazards. Um, so this plan um, was developed uh, in 2008-2010 timeframe. Uh, was adopted by the council in 2010, uh, but it requires continued updates and uh, in review. Um, and so this plan was um, updated and reviewed in 2017. Uh, it was um, adopted by the St. Joe County uh, Council in 2018. It's been approved by the Indiana Department of Homeland Security, NPMA. Um, you'd asked about the public meetings. There was a public meeting um, at the draft form. Um, they took those comments, reviewed them, uh, incorporated them into the plan, um, and then after it was approved by Department of Homeland Security and FEMA, there was a follow-up public hearing um, for additional comments. Uh, so there were two public meetings that happened as part of the plan update. Um, I don't think, I think I had mentioned in my note that uh, there is a list of other agencies that have been contacted. You also have meeting uh, sign-in sheets there in the background. I um, apologize for not having the county here, but um, this plan is, is it's important for us to adopt this uh, in that if we don't adopt it, we will not be eligible for certain disaster mitigation funds um, and grants that are available. Um, and so um, as part of our uh, continuing cooperation with St. Joe County, um, I'm requesting that the, county, that the council approve this plan. Cool. We have to answer your questions. Thank you. Any questions? No? Thank you. We'll open up to the public. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor of 1942, please come to the podium. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak against 1942, please come to the podium. Turn it back to council. Motion of adoption. Second. Yeah, just a, a couple points were made in committee, though, that I think it's important if we uh, do get some follow-up on the storm readiness and the emergency exercises um, in terms of when those are, when they're scheduled, um, that type of thing. And then um, 
the community, the looking at the, um, I'm sorry, the emergency exercises uh, and the public readiness component of this plan. If, if council perhaps could receive an update from um, our county counterparts. And then um, I think we asked for some, if there were any significant changes reflected in this updated version. And then um, I believe we asked too about, but I might be uh, wrong on this, uh, any dollars allocated um, currently um, uh, targeted for mitigation. I, th I don't think I mentioned that, that at the committee level. So just some follow up. That's, I, you know, that's a comment. You don't need him to answer. No, me. I don't right. need to comment. Just okay. at a later date, I think that would be appreciated. My concern is that you know we have had have had significant events, um, and um, just uh, council being of kind of aware of what what the overall plan is is important, and then to make sure that it is as responsive. You know that it's just you know it's good to update these things, but the broader that people are brought into the process and that there's, you know, the actionable right. pieces that, that should be a part of the, the planning um, and the readiness components, right. particularly on this, I think it, it would be good for council to be brought up to date. Okay. We'll follow back up with you. There is a motion and a second on the floor already. So um, who made the motion? Me. Mm -hmm. Who made the second? Gavin. Gavin. Ms. Kaufman, would you please do roll call? Thank you. Councilmember Jessica? Aye. Councilmember Davis? Aye. Councilmember Morty? Aye. Councilmember Furlick? Aye. Vice President White? Aye. Councilmember McBride? Aye. Councilmember Broden? Aye. President Scott? Aye. Eight ayes. Thank you. Uh, yeah. 1943, please. <laughs> You're really good. 1943, a resolution of the Common Council of South Bend, Indiana, encouraging continued and increased public engagement between the public and the Redevelopment Commission. Thank you. Is there a committee report? Yes, we'd like to listen. We're looking forward to hearing this. Send this forward favorably. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Motion to accept the substitutes. Okay. Second. 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 All in favor. Uh, Aye. All opposed. Yeah, well, that goes with my practice. <laughs> very good. Uh, is there a presenter? I will start it. Okay. Are we to read this in, in its entirety? Or no, 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 no. So just a couple comments. Um, first, first your name and address, please. Yes, uh, Council Member Joe Broden, South Bend, Indiana, 201 West North Shore. Thank you. Um, just a couple uh, pieces on this um, in terms of how it was put together. I want to thank um, our attorney, Bob Palmer and um, Karen White and Gavin, Council Members Karen White and Gavin Furlick for, for their assistance. Um, and then, of course, the, the rest of the Council for um, uh, entertaining this change, if you would, um, over the course of, um, uh, of the past uh, couple years and hoping that um, perhaps formalizing this request for this change um, uh, might bring a might bring about some 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 changes. So, um, in terms of uh, the way it's constructed, uh, we essentially wanted to use the resolution as a way to educate the public on some of the uh, responsibilities and what the Redevelopment Commission is empowered to do. So, those are the first um, one through seven statements there after the first whereas, um, and then we wanted to talk a little bit about the um, the role of uh, council relative to the Redevelopment Commission uh, in, in, in the next areas. And then um, uh, routinely, at the Redevelopment Commission and its staff uh, in the Department of Community Investments to investment provides uh, reports to the Council and also participates in the um, budget process. Okay. So there are opportunities where we receive documents and then those are publicly available um, as well on the city's website that, that um, I just want to acknowledge that in the in the resolution so we did that and then um, there's so that is actually the the sort of the middle of the resolution is the reporting requirements and that gets very detailed um, items A through F uh, with regard to the tax incremental finance districts and I, I think that was important to include uh, because they're uh, among the, the public. There's uh, various not, various levels of knowledge about um, TIFs, 
and how they're utilized, um, et cetera. So hopefully that will clarify that by embedding this that portion in the resolution. And then after that item F, we go into about 12 other short, quick, whereas statements. And what I'd like to direct the council to with regard to the substitute are the changes um, uh, that, are, that are here. So if you look at the first whereas statement after that letter F, uh, we deleted some language, uh, whereas, and it should read now, whereas the Redevelopment Commission has stated an expectation of having 28.4 million within its control during fiscal year 2019. Just cuts the statement there and adds and. So some deleted language in that first whereas. If you scroll all the way down, kind of midway into that column, there is a, if you'd like to number them, I think it goes all the way to 12. But in this section, the seventh whereas there, um, I will read it because I think this does need to be emphasized in terms of the spirit of, of um, this, uh, this resolution. Whereas among stated priorities of each of the Common Council, the City, and the Redevelopment Commission, uh, they are transparency, public engagement, and the city's growth. So um, just to make sure that that is emphasized, even though we're not reading the entire resolution, that's a, a very important whereas statement. Uh -huh. um, and then eight, um, or things continue down to the ninth uh -huh. section, whereas, and this is actually um, being responsive to the feedback that we got at the committee level from uh, Mr. Dan Buckenmeyer. We thank him for his uh, feedback. Um, council has uh, taken his recommendation and we have changed, made a change uh, from 5 p.m. or later to 4 p.m. or later. So that, um, in our um, estimation, we'll get around some of the issues regarding um, uh, the difficulties for staff or perhaps the petitioners to attend and participate during their work day. So um, I think that's a, a, a good compromise and uh, uh, certainly happy to incorporate that and ask council's consideration for that change. So that's change number two. Um, if you go down to the next whereas statement, we have um, deleted the word necessary mm -hmm. in that section. And if you then kick to the, sec the sections one, section two, section three, and section four, I'll quickly go through those changes. They're all very minor and coincide with some of the earlier changes. So section one, we will have, uh, we're suggesting a change in the scheduled meeting time. Oops, sorry, let me go with the right document here. Okay. Um, section one, um, there is simply a change of time from, so from 9.30 a.m to the recommended 4 p.m., the compromise time, um, or later. And then ins we actually inserted the word may provide more citizens of South Bend an opportunity, uh, opportunity to attend the meetings. And then um, we just inserted some additional language there uh, that um, basically talks about being respectful to the commission, its staff, its volunteers, and petitioners by going with this compromise time, um, not at, at, after the end of the workday here, but at 4, 4 p.m. And then the last item is in section two, the commission should adopt rules and procedures by which any person attending such a meeting is able to engage the redevelopment commission per agenda item. And that actually coincides with an earlier portion uh, of the document uh, just making the suggestion that um, both the commission members will be uh, will be served well um, uh, by uh, public input and and perhaps even the petitioners themselves and of course staff by um, letting our citizens be fully engaged, informed about the agenda, um, and be able to comment on each agenda item as they're presented to the redevelopment commission. And just as many of our other um, boards and commissions meet um, and have an opportunity for the public to do that, that this would be per agenda item. We thought that that was important, um, you know, rather than being at the top of the meeting uh, as sort of a public comment time or at the bottom as sort of a privilege of the floor that we actually um, would, would like to see um, input per agenda item in a way that you speak in favor, you speak against, and then the petitioners and or staff similar to here would have an opportunity for a rebuttal. But then the merits of the petitioned item 
uh, would be then uh, the final authority of the commission to determine. So um, I think we're staying in our lane as a council. I think we're being respectful to the changes that have been suggested, um, but we certainly want to formalize the request for the meeting time change and then a change in, in the format for the public engagement. Thank you. Uh, I'll ask my petition. Okay. Uh, well, I think Council Member Joe Broden has done an excellent job in summarizing uh, the uh, resolution as well as the different changes. We wish to thank not only Council Member uh, Gavin Furlick, our attorney, Bob Palmer, and also uh, Dan Buckenmeyer from Community Investment. You have the substitute version because these are some of the comments that he had suggested, and we were able to incorporate those within this particular resolution. The resolution, I believe, is important because it really clarifies for our public the role of the Redevelopment Commission, what it does, and our role as uh, council members as well. And again, it, it is a resolution that uh, encourages continued um, communication as well as public engagement. And so again, I'm very um, uh, excited to be part of the resolution and we ask that uh, the council will adopt the resolution as presented. Mr. Perlick, anything to add? No, just uh, thank you, Joe and Karen and Bob for mm -hmm. their work and, and being responsive to what Dan had to say. Mm -hmm. So in closing, <laughs> if I may. Um, as long as we don't read this. This is, uh, uh, it is non-binding, it's mm -hmm. uh, yes. important to point mm -hmm. out, um, but I think um, as a, a, a co-sponsors on this, we mm -hmm. hope that it is embraced by the department, mm -hmm. by the commission members, uh, both current and future, uh, those being uh, mayoral appointments and council appointments, and uh, the administration as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Davis, um, do you know when we will hear any response back from the administration regarding this, besides the fact that they may sign on any other a notification that they are in agreement or to this being put in place? Not Well, I can only speak in terms of that we did uh, have a brief conversation mm -hmm. with the mayor, so he is aware that mm -hmm. this resolution will be forthcoming. Okay. Because, like, with the change, I think this is going to be, I like the 4 o'clock, because there are area plans start at 3.30, and other things start at 4, so I think that's, transport starts at 4 o'clock, and so there are other meetings that start around that time that people are um, publicly have to do, so I think that was a good move from that standpoint, and um, I, I see the wisdom in doing that, so I'm hoping that they will... Um, not only in the signature, but respond back to us to say that, you know, mm -hmm. they appreciate the spirit and they're willing to look forward with that. Okay. Any Thank other you. questions? Seeing that, we'll open up to the public. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor of 1943 comes to the podium, please. State your name and address. My name is Conrad Damien, 718 East Broadway. I wish I had known you were doing this. Um, somehow or other... You didn't get the word out very well. This is something I have been concerned about for 10 years and have uh, complained about for that long. So I'm glad to see that you're dealing with this issue. I fairly regularly, regularly attend the Redevelopment Commission meetings, and I haven't seen the resolution, but I uh, am glad that it is as comprehensive as... Uh, Ms. Broden suggests. I don't think the community understands what the Redevelopment Commission does very well, and I am glad to know that that's in the resolution. I think that on a personal level, 9.30 works for me because I'm retired, <laughs> and so more evening meetings are not uh, particularly appreciated, but uh, <laughs> certainly uh, to make these meetings more available to the public is important. And I have been told that as a state law they couldn't have public input except on the uh, financial and the actual districts that they have public hearings about. So I'm glad to know that that is obviously not true since you are requir requesting that they have public input on each agenda item. Uh, that can be very confusing, I think, to uh, the commission as well as to the public. But I think it's really essential. Uh, 
I remember a time when there was a group there to speak uh, against what the commission was planning to do and were told that they had no right to speak. Mm -hmm. And so I think that it's really important that we have that right at all public meetings and every time that an item which affects people's lives, at that point it was about tearing down houses. But uh, those things that affect people's lives and affect the spending of tax money is very, very important to have public input. So I'm eager to read the resolution and I'm here to support that you all have gotten on board uh, with the idea that they need to be uh, more transparent and more um, eager to hear public input on the issues facing the commission. So I, I believe, without having read the resolution, but I support the resolution. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Next name and address. Jason Medicki, Critchlow, 3822 Ford Street. So I did take the time to read the resolution this weekend, and I did find it to be thoroughly comprehensive and, and very well put together. So I can't wait to kind of read some of the amendments and changes. Um, I appreciate the fact that as this process went on, the administration, at least in terms of community investment, seemed willing to to make some changes into the times of that meeting to move it to at least 4 p.m. You know, kind of a compromise between between I, you know, what the council was asking for and what works for them. So I, hopefully that means that they will be open to actually moving those meetings to a time when more people can attend, not just kind of be, be moving the time in the bill and then not end up actually moving the meeting times. Because I think, again, when you're talking $30 million of taxpayer money, you know, that needs to be done at a time when more people can see what's going on. And as was pointed out just before, we have an input into what's being done with those $30 million of taxpayer dollars. And I think Sometimes the Redevelopment Commission and Community Investment have gotten away from understanding that, that they're not their dollars, that they're our taxpayer dollars, and we should have an input in that. So I really do support this. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak against? Back to Council. One more comment before we go. Um, in the afternoon, there was comments about, in past, um, well, that... Sometimes when they switched it, uh, the attendance did not um, increase. But again, like has been mentioned, I think you just can't just say, well, if a meeting's at four and we have the same 20 people that show up, there's no need to go ahead and do this. Let's switch it back to 9 o'clock again. I think it, there really has to be effort made to <coughs> encourage people, let them know what's going on. And the fact is, if we have a meeting that's um, this full or packed, or half and half, we don't change council meetings just because of that. I would say, well, only 15 people showed up. We're going to have a council meeting today at, uh, at 11 o'clock in the morning. You know, we still ha have to make it accessible to the people as best we can. And I think um, what's your recommendation, too, I think we need to continue to always make sure as many of our um, meetings can be televised or put online as soon as can. I think that's all. The more people can see, whether they're on their phones or whether they're on their computers, and they get access to that, I think this is better for everybody. So I'm just hoping that if a meeting occurs and not that many people show up, there's just not a push to go back. Thank you. Motion. Dr. Davis. Motion to or any other Hold comments? on, we got two more comments. Sure. Ms. White, I mean, Ms. Broden, did you forget something? Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Admittedly. Um, but not really. Um, this resolution really, um, I hope the language is such and its, and its intent to educate um, helps. But I, 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 I want to make sure um, that one of these statements is, is actually captured in, in our minutes tonight in our discussion. Um, I think all of us, you know, wherever you, wherever you come down on this issue, um, is we all want to acknowledge that the Redevelopment Commission has played a vital role in the development of our city. Mm -hmm. um, and these proposed changes, um, the meeting time that we're recommending and um, the, the input per agenda item, we don't, as, at least as authors of this, we don't anticipate that that will in any way um, uh, inhibit the role or the function of the Redevelopment Commission. Um, to the contrary, we think that it would improve it. Thank you. I agree. Mr. Brody. Yeah. Um, 
I don't mean to be contentious or contrary, but I'm going to vote against this resolution. It's important to state, I think, not because uh, I'm not for uh, open government or uh, <coughs> transparency, which is a word that I think is overused. Um, people ought to know uh, what their appointed boards and commissions are doing. Um, we're all for that, including me. Uh, changing the time from whatever it is to 4 o'clock isn't going to really do a whole lot in my mind. If it does, in terms of participation, if it does, I'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, I think, and as I said in the note I sent to everybody and earlier in the committee meeting, I'm the last one probably on this board to speak uh, knowingly about technology, but uh, technology is there to open these meetings to the public in a much larger way than changing the time of the meeting. Uh, we do it here. We've got uh, cameras. This is uh, these meetings are uh, are live streamed, I believe, mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, and you can watch them later. I think because because there are important issues that affect people every day. Uh, whether it's the Park Board or the Board of Public Works or the uh, uh, Board of Safety or, uh, or or anything like that. Board of Public Works is more money goes through there than, uh, than anywhere. Um, I think that, uh, um, you know, we ought to at least investigate the opportunity that technology provides in this day that wasn't there when years ago when this first started being talked about to open uh, the uh, you know the meetings to uh, public participation and uh, and and uh, uh, content and uh, um, so I think uh, it's it's not a vote in opposition to open government it's a vote uh, uh, my my vote against this is uh, is a vote against what I think is a missed opportunity. I wish we would, uh, I'm glad it's all coming to a head, but I wish we would slow down and sit down with the administration and community investment uh, and, uh, and say how can, how can we really do this better? How can we engage the public? How can we inform the public? And, uh, uh, and I, I just think that there's a, there's a better way to do it. It's a missed opportunity. Uh, there are costs involved with doing this. They might be incidental, uh, but there are costs in doing what I'm suggesting as well. Maybe the city needs a meeting room studio or something like that with mm. fixed things that uh, you know that can live stream and broadcast this for later viewing. There's uh, more and more uh, people are. Uh, Recording and watching things later. I do it. I do it with the news. I do it with uh, just about everything, uh, from Turner Classic movies to anything else. It's just recorded at, at home, and you watch it when when you're able. Uh, and I think that could be said for public meetings too. Uh, so anyway, in, in um, I said earlier that uh, we don't want to move all these meetings to uh, of all the boards and commissions to. Uh, to later in the day because we might as well put the whole city staff on the second shift then. Um, and anyway, uh, in sum, that's why I'm going to vote against this. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, motion to adopt the substitute. Second. Ms. Kaufman. Councilmember Davis. Aye. Councilmember Gordy. No. Councilmember Furlick. Aye. Vice President White. Aye. Councilmember McBride. Aye. Councilmember Roden. Aye. Councilmember Teshka. Aye. President Scott. Nay. Six eyes. Thank you. Uh, first readings, please. Mr. Kaufman, would you please read 1619? You may. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good night. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. Good night. Thanks for coming.
Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Cope in 1619, please. 1619. Okay. First reading on an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana for budget transfers for various departments within the City of South Bend, Indiana for the year 2019. I move that this be sent to the Personnel and Finance Committee and heard for second uh, and third reading on uh, June 24th. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Thank you. 1719, please. 1719. First reading on the ordinance of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, appropriating additional funds for certain departmental and city services operations in 2019 of 85857 from General Fund 101, $657,159 from Parks and Recreation Fund 201, $28,150 from Gift Donation Request Fund 217, $97,077 from Hall of Fame Debt Service Fund 313, $321,707 from 2018 Fire Station No. 9 Bond Debt Service Fund 350, $178,504 from the Sports Development Fund 377, $1,811,000 thousand five hundred dollars from county option income tax fund four oh four three million three hundred thousand dollars from the twenty eighteen Zubond Capital Fund four fifty three and seventy thousand dollars from Smart Streets Fund Capital Fund seven fifty three. I move that uh, this be also sent to personal finance for our June twenty fourth meeting for second and third hearing. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All opposed. Thank you. Eighteen nineteen, Miss Coppin. 1819. First reading on an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, appropriating additional funds for certain departmental and enterprise operations in 2019 of $960,000 from EMS Capital Fund 287, $177,475 from Century Center Operating Fund 670, and $63,000 from Century Center Capital Fund 671. I move that this also be sent to personnel and finance for our June 24th meeting for second and third hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Any unfinished business? Um, you Now the crystals are still coming on? Uh, yeah, we're okay. looking at the 24th for the update. 20, okay. And the other and one? And also is? South Shore. South Shore? Cool. Um, I don't have a confirmed date on South Shore, though. No problem. I, would okay. I knew you were going to ask for that. Any other unfinished? I don't know if it's unfinished. You were going to make a uh, That's new. Mention. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, Karen's announcement for her. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> Any unfinished? No. All right, we'll go to new business. New. Uh, June 20, or June 12th at 5 p.m., uh, Karen White, uh, chair of the Personnel and Finance Committee, will have a uh, open to the public meeting with um, the city uh, controller discussing debt. We'll be review the debt. This is the first in a series of meetings that will revolve around the budget. So um, there will be the announcement probably is already out, right? So uh, June 12th, 5 p.m., um, probably either in the small room, um, the informal room at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. Any other new um, Related to that, I think there were there's already two presentations, correct, that are online for for previous meetings mm -hmm. and special topics. Right. On. Are those found um, just under health and I'm sorry, under um, personal and finance? Or does it? Okay. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Dr. Davis? Um, I'm working on a resolution. Hopefully, you'll be ready for two weeks and that regarding um, um, what we can do to help and stimulate some more discussion regarding what's going to happen with the homeless, with the library making changes. And in light of our last recent um, tornado warnings, it uh, was brought to my attention that um, many people who are homeless did not have a place to go. And so i um, just going to do a resolution regarding that. If, um, I'll, if you have any comments, or have you seen any thoughts on that, if you can please send me something so we can yep. make sure that we are included in that. Okay. Anything else? 
seeing none, we'll move the privilege of the floor. And this is your opportunity to talk to the council. You have three minutes. Anything, uh, you can only bring up things that were not on the agenda tonight. It's a more complicated way of saying it, isn't it? Uh, you can't discuss the agenda tonight. So um, please state your name and address, and Gavin Frelick will uh, give you a warning before your three minutes is up. Ready, go. Jason Bedicki, Critchlow, 3822 West Ford Street, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, back in December, I brought up the idea, uh, very briefly, of doing a formula business ordinance for the city of South Bend. And I kind of sent you guys just a brief email, kind of overviewing what that would be like. Since then, I got a little busy with some other endeavors. However, since then, I now have some free time on my hands and had much more time to look into this. Uh, so I'll have some more information to email you guys about this. Uh, the one thing I did find uh, really interesting is only one of them has been successfully challenged in federal court, and that was primarily due to the fact that they limited the size of any, any business could be, and they deemed it to be protective of one particular business in that case. Uh, otherwise, these are, are fairly routinely upheld through the federal, the local and federal appeals courts. Uh, so I'm kind of going to go into a brief overview of what the most basic ones look like to give you an idea of what these are. Uh, so hopefully we can get some momentum on these, particularly in light of even more business corridors going into TIF districts, which means we'll be putting millions of more dollars into these, these business corridors. We need to make sure we protect them uh, and make sure that they give us the kind of business return we're looking for. Uh, so most of them will start with very much a standard basic definition of what is a formula business. Uh, and it'll tell you, you know, it's basically any business that has two or more of the following, a standardized name, standardized arrays of services or merchandise, standardized employee uniforms, standardized decor, standardized facade decor, standardized signage, standardized color scheme, uh, standardized trademark or service, or any other similar features which cause it to be substantially identical to 10 or more businesses in the United States. Some go as low as five, but I feel like 10 is probably a better number than five. Five gets to be pretty arbitrarily low. Uh, they also live, most of them will have some pretty routine possible exemptions. Uh, most of those tend to be grocery stores because a lot of times they're targeting dollar stores and their, their negative impact on uh, grocery stores in, in what would otherwise could be considered food deserts. Uh, you know, uh, financial institutions are routinely exempted from them. Again, most of the time these are in, in key economic corridors. You want, you know, financial institutions there where people can do business. Uh, hotels and motels, uh, food service locations are, are routinely exempted as well. Um, you know, for Southman, I thought of just a list of areas that we could possibly use to protect this. Because some cities go their whole cities. I feel like that's kind of pretty broad with the way we have certain economic areas set up to kind of attract that big box retail and, and things of that nature. And you have 30 uh, seconds. Some of these would be Western Avenue, uh, Lincoln Way uh, West, Michigan and Main, the CBD, Indiana Avenue Corridor, Main Street, uh, and Michigan. Uh, Mishawaka Avenue and Portage Avenue um, and also they tend to have grandfather rules that protect existing businesses so you can't chase out an existing business but then those grandfather exemptions are eliminated the minute that you sell that business or close it so say you have a family dollar on Western Avenue it closes guess what you can't put another Dollar General in there or Dollar Tree who owns family dollar sells it to another company then they lose their grandfather as well they kind of take that away cool. Thank you. Next name and address. Samuel Brown, 222 East Street, the city of South Bend. I want to speak on uh, the program that we got at the Charles Black Center uh, Sunday from 3 to 5. And uh, Mother Take Action Against Violence. Mm -hmm. Beautiful program. You know, I left there uh, a lot of tears uh, to see the, the slideshow of people have lost their life to gun violence. And I, uh, I'm really proud of all these groups just coming together and that point in thing has been making the city aware of what's happening in our city. And it's what it's going to take. It's going to take a city effort uh, to try to slow and stop the use of this killing. Uh, my granddaughter in Indonesia She's a sophomore in Notre Dame. That don't really matter. She's a citizen. She was on her way over to our house over by Memorial Hospital. She come down Walnut at the intersection of Fossil Night and Walnut 
a young man came through. He sat about four times, and the knees were screaming and howling. He stopped. She went through, and he went back to shooting at the house in the car. Yeah. Uh, I think the young man who let my granddaughter live. It, uh, now we, a family trying to put a, a route that these kids are tie drives, in the drives. Which way to go is the safe route? There is no safe route. I mean, it can happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. So we just got to keep our work up as a city mm -hmm. and try to stamp this out. And it's happening over the United States. And it just stopped there. Mm -hmm. But I just thank God that uh, I'm one of the families that didn't have a <coughs> tragedy and the young man stopped. He let it go through and then he went back to shooting. And I thank God for that. But we still got to keep working on it, trying to stop this sister's shooting. Thank you for listening to me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next, name and address. Name, Rod, good child. Better known as Rocket Rod in the running world. <laughs> if you could just pass that to each one so they could see that. He'll be giving you three items. One is a sample of what? I guess. Oh, it's 837 South 24th Street, South Bend, Indiana, 46615. Good child. My father is Robert Goodchild. Right. Nip school. 34 years. And some of you might have learned from when you looked at the specs, what's the third largest uh, budget item in every school program? Trent. South Bend. It's exactly right. Nip school. And he ran Nip school for 34 years. The only one that came out of the Menominee Indian Reservation with no degree was a first lieutenant. That is... There's nothing else mm. out there like it. And it makes me proud because he had a son, and I had the same genetics as my mom and my dad. My dad was a wrestler, varsity, and my mom was a three-sport captain at New Trier, Glencourt, Illinois. He came to South Bend with the war. He got married, and here I am. We had the number one run in all of Michiana. One of the top ten in the entire Midwest, a great school, 21 years ago. It was Sam. When you look at the other one, you say, what was Rinky, the only state champion we ever had for South Bend? How bad did I beat him? By a minute and a half. Mm. That's when he just won the state. I never had a problem in the same Mid-American Conference. We were number one for Western F. Michigan. We had the top team back-to-back -back championships, mm. and yet Rinky never even made it uh, with Miami and Ohio. That's your number one state champion from the city of South Bend. I never lost to him. Um, I never raced him because I didn't have a chance in my senior year I was injured. I've come back from a couple operations just recently. My quest to run the sub four minute mile, you can see there, that's when I won the plaque proud year down at Knoxville, Tennessee. When you look at it, it's very simple. We've done seven years of the great stomp, you know, spirit animals rather, uh, and when I was in 2015, I thanked everybody for the support that you gave me. As I was a child, I said I went to Disneyland. I saw the first time, captured my imagination, all of these marvelous carvings, Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. And yes, 30 seconds, right. And anyways, that was family. That was your imagination. That's what captured... In the two books, Good Child and His no, Quest no, to Go Some More, he keep his quest to go to the family and how much influence they had on him with the family thoughts with all the information from Notre Dame captured his life. They're both identical. One was an athlete, both scholar, and the other one was a running scholar. Just happened to go to Western Michigan, not to Oxford. Thank you all so very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And yes, we got the 11 stones, by the way. Uh, thank you. And they'll be in before the third Saturday in July, about right. 30. So you're all welcome. And yeah, of course, all of you there as we commemorate the 11 stones that give the messages. All right. Thank you, Mr. Goodchild. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Good night, everybody. This one means. I see some of my slides are still here. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Uh.
Conrad. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.